Machine learning models make predictions that fall into four possible outcomes. True positive, where model correctly predicts the positive class. False positive, where model incorrectly predicts the positive class when the actual outcome is negative, also known as type 1 error. True negative, where model correctly predicts the negative class. And false negative, where model incorrectly predicts the negative class when the actual outcome is positive, also known as type 2 error. And these outcomes form the basis for evaluating a model performance. And the presence of false positives and false negatives highlights where the model's predictions go wrong, or, in simpler terms, where values get confused. And this is why the humble 2x2 table used to organize these outcomes has earned the impressive title of confusion matrix. What is truly remarkable is that despite containing just four numbers, a confusion matrix can generate at least 27 distinct metrics that measure predictive power. Each metric serves a unique purpose depending on the context in which it's applied. Given the high number of metrics, I'll break them down into a series of videos on my channel. In each video, I'll explore a group of related metrics, explaining what they mean, demonstrating how to calculate them both manually and in R, and providing real-world examples of where and why they matter. Now, let's dive in and create a confusion matrix from model predictions. To build the confusion matrix for a machine learning model, follow these steps. Split your dataset into two parts, about 80% for training and 20% for testing. Use only the training data to teach the model. Use the trained model to predict the probabilities of the positive outcome for the test data. Then convert probabilities to categories, namely, if the probability is greater than 0.5, classify it as yes. If it's 0.5 or lower, classify it as no. Finally, compare the actual values in the test data with the predicted ones using a simple 2x2 table called a confusion matrix. Be careful though, even though a confusion matrix only has four numbers, it's easy to confuse them. Here's what you need to remember. Rows should represent the predicted values from your model or test. The top row is for positive predictions, and the bottom row is for negative predictions. Columns should represent the actual true values, also called the gold standard. The left column is for positive outcomes, while the right column is for negative outcomes. Luckily, the Wikipedia article on confusion matrices gets this right. And there are scientific papers like Trevitan 2017 that explain it in detail. By the way, always double check what I am saying or what any other internet resource tells you. And if you spot a mistake, don't hesitate to correct me in the comments below. Plus, checking multiple sources will help you to learn more effectively. Unfortunately, confusion matrices are often misrepresented online. A quick Google search will show you how many people get it wrong. Common mistakes include placing true values in the rows instead of the columns and putting negative outcomes on the left instead of the right. These errors can completely mess up your results, as the apitest function from APR package shows. For example, let's place a wrong confusion matrix next to a correct one to see the impact of getting it right. If you compare any of the metrics, you'll notice they differ significantly. Take sensitivity and specificity, two of the most commonly used metrics. They produce completely different results, depending on how the matrix is structured. To ensure accuracy, always place the gold standard or actual values as the second argument in the table function. This ensures that the actual values appear in the columns and the predicted values in the rows. In a correctly structured confusion matrix, the diagonal from the upper left to lower right shows correctly classified values, namely true positives and true negatives. The diagonal from the upper right to lower left 
shows misclassified values, namely false positives and false negatives. The epitests function has two nice features. It reminds you to place the true outcomes or actual values in the columns. And it provides 95% confidence intervals, which many common machine learning functions, like confusion matrix from the caret package, don't include. That said, the confusion matrix function also has advantages. For instance, it includes metrics like the detection rate, which is an excellent starting point for analyzing model performance because it's simple and intuitive. But before we start, I want to tell you that this video is brought to you by Stock Unlock. Ever wondered how to invest like Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger? Stock Unlock is the best place to start mastering long-term value investing. With over 170,000 stocks and ETFs, more than 35 years of financial data, and over 100 valuation metrics, Stock Unlock gives you unparalleled insights into the market. Their visualization tools simplify complex data, helping you to spot opportunities and risks instantly. Even a single number, the inside score, which is actually the main reason people stay with Stock Unlock, will make you a better investor in seconds. The inside score adapts metrics to different industries, from banks to tech companies. It's a game changer for identifying great investment opportunities instantly and avoiding potential pitfalls something I personally fell into before discovering Stock Unlock. Want to learn more? Use the Learn button to explore detailed yet short and clear explanations of any investment metrics you are interested in. Or check out the creator's YouTube channels to get to know exactly who is behind Stock Unlock. Since joining Stock Unlock, I've learned more in months than in years of self-study. And that's why I partnered with them. Best of all, you can start with one free month of full functionality, and if you're ready to commit, use my exclusive affiliate link below to get 10% of your first year. Take the first free step towards smarter investing. Try Stock Unlock today. The detection rate tells us the proportion of actual positives that the model correctly identified. In our example, the detection rate is 22%. But is this good or bad? It depends on the situation. In high-stakes scenarios, like detecting diseases or preventing fraud, 22% is likely too low. Missing too many true positives can have serious consequences. In challenging problems, such as those with imbalanced datasets or complex tasks, 22% might actually represent solid progress. For example, the detection rate is especially useful in manufacturing to monitor defect rates. It helps identify faulty products in modern, robot-operated factories where even small improvements can make a big difference. However, the detection rate has a major limitation. It only focuses on true positives and completely ignores false positives. And this means it doesn't give us the full picture of how well the model is performing. To get a more complete understanding, we need to look at the next important metric in the confusion matrix, the detection prevalence. And the detection prevalence, also known as apparent prevalence, is the percentage of positive cases predicted by the model. In our Titanic example, it represents the proportion of people the model predicts will survive. Here is how we calculate it. We add up all the predicted positives, the values in the top row of the confusion matrix, and divide by the total number of cases. This means our model predicts that 26% of people on the Titanic would survive. But why is this prevalence called apparent? The term reflects the fact that these are model predictions, which may not align with reality. To understand the reality, we need to calculate the true prevalence, which we'll explore next. By the way, if you find any value in my content, I'd really appreciate a thumbs up. To get the R code and transcripts from any of my videos, feel free to join my channel as a member. Lastly, if you'd like to support my channel for free while enjoying some fantastic benefits, check out the affiliate links in the description below. For instance, if you are interested in the product like NordVPN, 
to protect your online security, using my link will get you significant discounts. True prevalence shows the actual percentage of positive cases, including those the model missed. In the Titanic example, it's the real proportion of survivors, even those the model incorrectly predicted wouldn't make it. To calculate true prevalence, focus on the left column of the confusion matrix, add the true positives and false negatives, and divide by the population size of 208. It's that simple. The true prevalence is 41%, which is much higher than the model's predicted apparent prevalence of 26%. That's a huge gap, especially in sensitive cases involving human lives. And this naturally brings us to sensitivity, a core metric for understanding how well a model identifies true positives. And sensitivity is just the beginning. There are seven essential performance metrics that form the backbone of evaluating any machine learning model. In the next video, I'll walk you through all of them step by step.